What's going on YouTube? So back in February, we brought you guys one of the first reviews of the all-new GLE. And now that it's fall, it's time for its big brother, the 2020 GLS, to hit the lots. Mercedes is billing this as the S-Class of SUVs, which is a bold statement and one that we had to verify in person with an in-depth review. Of course, we would like to take a moment to specially thank our friends at James Motor Company in Lexington for giving us access to this GLS. And of course, if you're in the market for any new Mercedes, make sure you stop by their dealership or visit them via their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with that all said, let's see if this new GLS beats all the rivals. So starting off with the exterior, as always, Mercedes has mostly evolved the classy looks of the outgoing one. The most familiar angle is definitely head-on with the front, since it has a very similar two-bar grille with the giant Mercedes emblem in the middle. What's more different is the sportier looking area under the grille and the new advanced headlights. These full LED lights are now standard equipment. And Mercedes brags that each unit has 120 individual bulbs to produce the maximum allowable brightness on U.S. roads. Now it is also worth noting that the new AMG line model does tweak the front design, but not to the same extent as in the GLC and E, since it does opt out of the typical diamond grille finish. While it does look familiar to a certain extent, the rest of the design does venture further from the outgoing model. Length is up about 3 inches, and the side profile overall looks a lot smoother. And as far as the back, it looks significantly different, in particular because of the super slender LED taillights replacing the previous boxy ones. Along the bottom there is a chrome accented diffuser and dual horizontal exhaust pipes again with a slightly different design on the AMG line models. And while we're down here, I'll go ahead and mention the max tow rating of 7,700 pounds for the 450, which is about 300 pounds more than the equivalent BMW X7. So all in all, the design of this all new GLS is pure class, which is notable in a segment of sometimes gaudy and overwrought offerings. Now you can spice up the design by choosing some of the flashier wheel options, like these 21 inch triplet 5 spoke alloys. 19 inch alloys are standard, and there are 8 other options, all leading up to the insane 23 inch wheels on the 580. Next up we have the mirrors, which are always fully loaded with heating, auto dimming, power folding, and blind spot monitoring. Now in addition to the BSM system, every GLS will come with automatic forward emergency braking and have the option of adding the driver's assistance package. That grouping will include active lane keeping assist and active BSM, which can both steer you out of harm's way, as well as the semi-autonomous adaptive cruise control system called Active Distance Assist Distronic. But anyways, that's it for the evolutionary exterior. But now let's get to the revolutionary changes on the inside. Now walking up to the all new Mercedes GLS, you will notice a couple changes right off the bat. Uh, first of all, we do have Mercedes brand new key fob. And additionally, you will find the keyless sensors on the door handle. Those are now standard equipment. You also have remote start via the Mercedes Me app. That is free for three years. Now, of course, walking up to the vehicle, all you got to do is grab the handle and the sensor will unlock the doors and fold out the mirrors. Alright, so taking our first look inside the brand new GLS, as you can see it's got a very high-tech and sophisticated looking cabin. 
You've also got a ton of different interior color and material combinations, as is typical with Mercedes models, yet alone the flagship SUV. Um, so what you're looking at on the standard model is an MB Tech synthetic leather. Um, that's actually what we have since this is a pretty lowly equipped model. Most of the ones shipping out right now uh, don't have a ton of options actually. Nevertheless, uh, this is finished in the black color scheme, but we also have macchiato beige, espresso, or magma gray color options. You also have optional real leather uh, on the 450 or standard on the 580 that comes in the same colors plus a special tartufo color scheme. And then furthermore, you have a one final option that's going to be full Napa leather um, and that comes in a black and gray combination. Then in regards to your interior trims, there are about 10 of them. Um, you have aluminum or gray linden wood as the standard equipment. You also have gray oak, brown walnut, metal, uh, Desenio brown ash, and brown lines linden. Now turning over here to your door trim, it is beautifully finished as you'd expect. So we do have a nice leather material that goes all through here as well as right above it. And the top part on this model is padded. You can also option this into a leatherette material if you want to. As far as our seats here, uh, you do have 14-way power adjusting seats standard. Uh, of course, they're adjusted right there, and you also have three-person memory seating. You also notice that this model here has the heated and ventilated seats. Those are optional in the convenience package, um, and you can further option on massaging if you want. As far as your windows, they are one-touch automatic for all four. And then, like I said, this seat is the MB Tech synthetic leather. Uh, however, Mercedes does do a fantastic job making it feel very realistic, and they also give it a nice uh, stitching design right here. Now, getting inside the vehicle is very simple. Uh, we actually have running boards, uh, not necessary because it is pretty low to the ground already, but there are different height settings for the air suspension, so you could definitely make it taller. So first looking around the cabin here, like I said, it is very high tech looking. Um, you will also notice a lot of similar characteristics to the GLE, which we drove back in February. Now, as far as your material options, they are very high quality. So across your upper dash here, this will always be finished in a leatherette material. Um, that is different from the GLE. So this is always leatherette. Like I said, you can option on leatherette onto the door trims as well. And you can actually change all this out for Napa leather if you go for a high-end optioned model. Um, through here we have this beautiful wood with these real aluminum air vents. And then all through here we have, of course, a nice finished leatherette with color contrast stitching. And we've got these really nice big handles that go through here. Of course, in typical Mercedes fashion, you're not going to notice any panel gaps. Um, and everything is just super, super solid. Now to start up the GLS, you're just going to press the button. And when you press it, you will see this standard 12.3 inch display fire up. It is part of the brand new MBUX system, which is uh, included on every GLS, and that does go with the 12.3 inch gauge cluster. <laughs> Now, like I just said, these gauges here, they are standard on every model, um, and they are fully reconfigurable. This is the newest Mercedes setup, so you can actually reconfigure all three of these tiers, so that is very cool. So you can just go through, flip through all these different types of options, like I said, into each of these three sections. Furthermore, you can press the home button here, located right here, so you control it with this trackpad and these buttons right here. And we can actually go into a few different things. One of the things that we can go into is design. Um, and we can change the entire design. So we can switch into understated. So as you can see, now we have practically, uh, you know, just the minimum amount of information that you can have on the screen. Uh, we can also switch into what they call progressive, 
which is a pretty interesting design. Now heading back to the steering wheel, of course it is electric power assisted steering. Um, we do have the standard leather wrap steering wheel, but you can get wood trim if you want. And if you choose the AMG line, it's going to be a flat bottom setup. And as far as your buttons, these of course are new, so you have your adaptive cruise control buttons here. Um, uh, you have touch sensors, like I said, for that side, and then you also have touch, dis touch sensors for this screen as well. Um, over here you have your phone, audio, and voice controls. As far as the steering wheel itself, uh, we actually have a power adjusting steering wheel as standard equipment, but heating is going to be a standalone $250 option. Now, would, now this would also be a pretty good time to talk about the heated armrest. You actually have those available as well uh, for both the front and the rear, and those can be added as another standalone option. Now, of course, this is a large luxury three row, so space is very, very important. So we'll go ahead and talk about the storage up front. Press that button there. This will open up your center console. As you can see, it is quite large, um, really nicely felt lined as well. And inside you do have one of your USB type C ports. Up in front of that, we have this piano black trim, which we can slide up to reveal our two cup holders as well as another storage area, uh, which is also a wireless phone charging pad as standard equipment. Um, if you don't want to use that, you do also have two more USB Type-C ports. Um, I do want to mention something also about the cup holders while we're looking at them. They can be heated and cooled, which is a pretty interesting feature. Now, of course, the reason Mercedes has this much storage is because they opt for an electronic shifter um, up here as the stock, this is the newest stock design. So you just put your foot on the brake and you bump down for drive. Um, we do also have paddle shifters as well as standard equipment. And then for reverse, you're just gonna go up the opposite way. Now once you're into reverse, you will notice this 360 degree camera system. Um, kind of surprisingly, this is standard equipment on this model as well as the auto parking for both perpendicular and parallel parking spots. Um, you do have both your 360 view, of course, and your other view, uh, as well as dynamic guidelines and front and rear parking sensors. And then for park, all you have to do is just press the button on the end of the stock, and the electronic parking brake does automatically deploy when you go into park. All right, now a couple more things to talk about here on the dashboard. Um, what you'll be noticing right now is your brand new MBUX touch controller. This is one of the ways you control the system of the several others, which we'll talk about a little later in the video. And then around it, we've got diff different types of controls, including right here, we have our dynamic. This is for your different drive modes. So as you can see, this model has several. We have off-road, eco, comfort, sport, and individual, where we can tailor different types of things. As so we can click that settings button there and tailor different things. Now you can tailor the air suspension, um, which it of course is different from in the GLE, which does not come standard with the air suspension like this does. And then as far as on the other side, you do have a few more shortcuts as well as your volume knob. Now the vast majority of models here are going to be equipped with the standard 590 watt 13 speaker Burmester surround sound system. So we'll go ahead and take a sample of that. As you can tell, sound quality of this is phenomenal. Um, but if you've got $1,600 or $5,400 to burn, excuse me, there's a 1600 watt 26 speaker Burmester high end surround sound system. I haven't heard that, but I'm sure that's absolutely insane. And that is available as an option. So on this car, there's a lot of different climate setups offered. Um, so you start with the dual zone automatic, however on this particular model we've opted for the four zone automatic in the convenience package. 
Additionally, there is five zone automatic, so you can even control the temperature in the third row. That's pretty cool. Um, and I believe only the only other vehicle I've seen with that is the BMW X7. But of course, as you can see, this is very simple to use. When you make adjustments, they're gonna show up up here. Um, and you can also click and do things simply like check out the second row zones back there like that. Um, and most of the buttons are located physically, so it's super simple to use. And then heading up here, we do have our MBUX system. Um, running low on battery today, so I'm going to not going to discuss this system. Uh, we do have a dedicated tech help video available as a link in the video description. So you can check out that video if you want a real detailed look at the MBUX system. Now moving on up here, we do have an auto dimming mirror with the new frameless design as well as your Homelink Universal remotes. Then on this particular model, we have the moonroof. This is just the standard size unit. It is standard equipment on the GLS. Um, you do have the additional option of a panoramic moonroof. Um, that's available for just $1,000. And uh, Mercedes does brag that it's 50% larger than last year, so it definitely is going to cover up the vast majority of the roof. But all in all, I have to say, this cabin is absolutely a phenomenal place. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. You have the latest technology. Um, you know, it really does truly feel like the S-Class of SUVs now that they've fully redesigned it. But anyways, guys, that sums up the front areas. Uh, so now go ahead and hand it off to Mason, who will check out the very important second, third, and cargo areas. Now heading around to the second row of the all new 2020 Mercedes GLS, you are gonna find a really competitive amount of space. I don't have the exact measurements, uh, but it is very competitive with the X7. Like I mentioned, we have been in the BMW X7 before um, and it feels about the same. Now turning over to the door trim itself, of course this is a flagship luxury SUV, so it is going to have a very nice one. So we have a leather wrapping across all of the bottom portion and onto the armrest. It is leather wrapped above that and a padded plastic on this upper portion. Now I do also want to point out that we do have power rear window sunshades which are included in the convenience package and operated by this uh, window switch here. Now in addition to that you will also notice that we have power adjustment for the second row. Uh, this is actually standard equipment across the board which is a really really nice feature. So as you can see I can adjust the slide and recline of the seat just as simple as that. And I can even do stuff like adjust the headrest uh, which is a really, really nice feature. A lot of cars don't even have that in the front. And finishing off the door trim, we do have some storage down below that. Now, I do also want to point out that you can have heated armrest if that's included in the front row. It's also here in the second row. And turning over to the seat itself, uh, like I mentioned, it is power adjusting. And this particular model has opt-in for the bench seating. However, you can get captain's chairs if you want that. Getting in is quite easy. Now here in the center, of course, this is a flagship Mercedes SUV, so they are going to give you plenty of standard equipment. So you will find these rear vents as standard uh, across all the trim levels. And down below that, you will also find your own climate adjustments. So as you can tell, we do have four zone climate control on this model. So all you have to do to adjust your temperature is use these little knobs here. Now in addition to that, down below that, you do have two USB type C's. And further below that, we have a household style outlet as well. Now I also want to point out that there is the option of heated rear seats, that's a standalone option, and you do have several other options available in uh, the executive packages. So Mercedes actually does allow you to have kind of like an executive rear seating package in this GLS model, and basically what that will add is a special rear headrest, 
an MBUX tablet that controls the front uh, areas, wireless phone charging, and then if you go for the Executive Package Plus, that will also throw in ventilated seats and massaging here in the back. So there is that option if you want to have a super nice rear seat in this GLS SUV, you don't want to go for the S-Class, that is an option. Now turning over to the center armrest on this regular model, uh, it's just your normal armrest, and inside you do have some storage, and in the ends you do have two pop-out cup holders. It's also worth noting that they can also be heated and cooled. And in terms of rear leg room, uh, I have plenty of space. Like I said, this is on par with the X7, even though we don't have the exact measurements. Um, so I have about, I would say, at least a foot of space between my knees and the seat back, and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. Alrighty, so heading around to the third row, this is obviously one of this car's biggest features. All you have to do to get in is locate this little toggle, push it, and the seat will automatically start to fold out of the way. It is a one-touch button, and look at that. Kind of folds out and also lifts up and out of the way. Now looking at the third row itself, we once again don't have the exact measurements for this. Uh, however, it is very competitive with its rivals, so now let's go ahead and get back there and see what it's like. Of course, entry is very easy in here, since that seat does slide right out of the way. And sitting back here, in order to get the seat back into place, you actually do have that option. So all you have to do is locate this little button right here, and it will slide the seat right back into place. Alrighty, so now that it's locked back into place, I have to say I am extremely impressed by the amount of space back here in the third row. Mercedes says this could fit a six foot four person. I don't know about that, but I still have about three to four inches of rear leg room, and my feet have plenty of space to slide up underneath the seat, which is a great feature to have. And there's also plenty of thigh support. As you can see, it's almost just like being in the second row. Now off to the side, they have also given us some features. So we have a cup holder, as was well the button to uh, slide this seat out of the way. Two charging USB or USB Type C's on both sides, so there's actually four back here. And up top we do have some lighting, and I do also want to point out that if you had the optional five zone climate, you would have your own climate controls back here, in addition to the optional heated rear, heated third row seats. But overall, pretty fantastic third row. Now in order to get it out, just push the button again. Once again, everything is electrically operated. Now heading around to the tailgate of the GLS, it is standard hands-free power, so all I have to do to w open it up is to wave your foot under the bumper. And once inside the GLS's trunk, you are going to find a large amount of space as you would expect for something this big. It, it, it comes in at 17 cubic feet of space behind the third row seats. If you fold them, it expands to 49 cubic feet, and if you fold all the seats, it goes all the way up to 85 cubic feet. Now that is worth mentioning, that's on par with the X7 in the uh, most of the measurements, however the maximum is about 5 cubic feet less. However, Mercedes has finished it super nice back here. Uh, so we do have aluminum scuff plates, as well as a super nice carpeting. And under, underneath the floor, we do have a spare tire, as well as a little storage area there. And off to the side, we do have some LED lighting, a cargo cover. And you will also notice these buttons uh, to fold the uh, second and third rows. So as you can see, uh, we have, this is for the second row, and on that side, we have the controls for the third row. So if you want to do them independently, you can do that. Or you can just hit this all button on this side and that will fold all of the seeds at once.
This is an absolutely amazing feature. Uh, it's super nice because in pretty much any other car besides the X7, uh, folding all of these rows would take like a full like 20 seconds. Uh, and this is just the one press of a button and it folds all the seats at once. Now, of course, here on the passenger seat, uh, we do have a standard power adjustment and also standard memory seats. And in front of the passenger, we have nice materials. Down below that, we have a really good size glove box. As you can see, it is felt lined, LED illuminated, and it goes back quite a distance. And up top, we do have a sun visor with a light LED light and mirror, does also detach, and we do also have the two, uh, two sun visor kind of method here, so if we have sun in both the side and the front, uh, we can drop this down and have both sides protected, which is a really nice touch. But anyway guys, that sums up all of the stuff for the rear areas of this GLS, so now let's go ahead and get out on the road and see how this all new powertrain performs. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the advanced powertrain options you have here on the 2020 GLS. Um, now, for this vehicle, one of these powertrain options is going to be familiar to you if you know anything about the GLE that we reviewed back in February when it first came out. Uh, that's going to be this model here, the GLS 450. Uh, this is the only thing that's in production currently. The next one is coming a little later. Um, but anyways, that is a 3-liter inline six with what Mercedes calls EQ boost it's basically a mild hybrid system and that's going to work um, of course different situations to give you a little bit of boost of power um, and also power different things like the advanced auto start stop system which we'll show you in the uh, test drive portion um, but as far as your power that's going to be 362 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque which I will point out is more standard power than either the X7 or the Audi Q7. Now if you want to go all out, they do offer you another option coming, like I said, later in the year. That's the GLS 580, and that's going to pair a 4-liter twin-turbo V8, uh, also with the same EQ boost system, for a total of 483 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. Um, wow. Also more power than the X750i. Um, but yeah, that's pretty crazy power, and that's not even an AMG. There definitely will be an AMG or something follow probably next year or something like that. As far as your transmissions, you'll be looking at a 9-speed automatic transmission, and every one of these is going to ship with 4-matic, four 4-wheel four drive. 0-60 um, to 60 for the 450 version, which is what we have, is going to be at 5.9 seconds. Obviously, uh, you're going to be looking at a pretty decent amount less uh, if you go for that 580. And lastly, the only fuel economy numbers available right now are going to be for the 450 model. Um, and that's going to be rated at 19 city, 23 highway, 21 combined, which all told is actually pretty good given how large this yeah. vehicle is. All right, nevertheless, let's take it out on the road and see how all these systems work together. Alright, so we just got a little short initial takeoff here in the GLS, but power is definitely feels really good right from the start there. Remarkably good. Now we drove the GLE 450, they'll share the same powertrain. This is a bigger vehicle, um, so we'll see if you can tell too much of a difference. Um, I haven't really like, compared the weights or anything like that. Of course, it's a little bit longer and stuff, but um, should be a pretty familiar driving experience to that, which would certainly be a good thing in my opinion. Wow. <laughs> I 
I'm, you know, I'm just kind of trying to take this in for a second because, you know, we're cruising down 40, 45 miles an hour, and, I mean, almost no car on the, like, no cars on the market have, like, the level of isolation that I feel right now. I feel like I am completely isolated from everyone and everything around me. Like, I can't hear a car. Yeah, I do can't, you hear anything? I, I mean, there's no traffic. A helicopter wind. went over just a second ago. Couldn't hear it. You could just see it. Couldn't hear it. I want you all to be paying attention down here to our tachometer right here. All right. Now, if you're paying attention, you will notice that uh, the auto start stop engages before you come to a complete stop. That's what I was talking about um, in the powertrain where I was talking about the advanced auto start stop system. Um, this basically has a coasting ability. So as you come to a stop, you're coasting down, the engine powers off. Uh, and it powers off when it's not needed, and that's because it has the battery power to go off of. Now, that does save fuel. But it's tremendously smooth. Yeah. It all just works together in a way that you can't feel it. And by having the engine turn off while you're still even in motion, it just blends it seamlessly. And then when I take back off, I'm going to start. The battery power is going to be the first thing that kicks in. Yeah, we talked uh, extensively about this in the GLE review. And like Drew mentioned, this is the same powertrain. I seriously hold that as the best auto start stop system in the entire automotive industry. Um, and I, it, the same is true here. I mean, do, you just don't feel anything. It's hard to describe how good it is. You may have experienced different types of auto start stop systems and vehicles um, that you own or have ridden in. Really, until you experience this setup here in this GLS and the GLE, um, you can't really understand how smooth it is. Like, it is truly imperceptible. feels really good. That was kind of like a, um, I don't know what you want to call it, rolling start. Um, but yeah, you don't find this engine flat anywhere. Uh, the power is available to you as you need it. I don't even think it, it didn't shift a gear right there. It just kind of just seamlessly just pushed the... Oh, it did. You just didn't feel it. <laughs> And wow, I mean, now we're up to about 60, so this is highway speed, um, remarkably smooth. I mean, I hate to keep talking about the same thing, but it is so smooth and so comfortable and so quiet in here. You know, I just want to be sure to emphasize that. Um, if that's what you're really looking for, this GLS is, I mean, seriously, put it on your list because this is quite possibly one of the best in the entire automotive industry of making something smooth. Now I do want to point out that one of this car's uh, options is that it does have the $300 uh, augmented reality navigation system. Um, we have touched on this in a lot of different Mercedes models because a lot of the most recent ones will have it. Um, but I do want to point out just how useful it is. So we set a destination and it's basically going to overlay arrows onto a live camera feed of the, the directions that it has. So if you have an upcoming turn, it will just overlay the arrows into the live camera and basically tell you where to turn. And in something like this, like a neighborhood, if you were navigating to just say, this house is 4,024, uh, if you had that set as your destination, it would actually put that on the house so you can uh, tell which specific house you're going to. So that's a very, very useful feature. It's definitely not just a gimmick, and we've you know touched on that in other Mercedes reviews right that, so as I mean, we, look at that as we bend around here it's telling me to do a u-turn right here and just like that now on this model we have the standard air suspension set up um, so this is of course tuned for comfort because this is a luxury SUV um, but I mean, it feel, actually feels surprisingly agile 
for its size, the steering is really quite responsive. Um, as you can see, it, it responds really fast for yeah. something so big, and it really doesn't have uh, just, a, just a touch of numbness. Of course, the steering is on the lighter side, um, but like I said, I mean, actually, in the same day, we have um, filmed an RX, so I can kind of talk about the difference there is pretty night and day in the steering setups. This is just a kind of a lot more stout. The other thing worth remembering though is that while we do have the standard air suspension, there is another air suspension available. We kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, um, but it's kind of that special trick suspension that you see in the kind of the gimmicky <laughs> the bouncing dancing, up and yeah. down dancing thing. Um, that's super cool. I mean, nothing else does that in the world. Um, but there is one more practical reason that you could choose that. Um, and that's because it comes with a system that leans the vehicle into corners. So essentially, if I'm turning, say, this direction, I kind of drop the air suspension, raise it on this side, and it kind of tucks me into it. Um, that's going to dramatically reduce body roll and really make this thing handle uh, in a way that is crazy for the class. Like I said, this handles pretty good as is. Uh, of course, there is body roll because this is a very large vehicle, but that's going to um, would take that down a few more notches. Yeah, that off the line power is really, really good. good. I mean, that was 30 in just like three seconds. So, uh, I mean, excellent power. You know, really, all, all in all, I guess the, the best way I could conclude this car is just to say how well so many different things are working together here. Yet, here in this GLS, it all works together so seamlessly and in such a refined and quiet manner that you forget that it is advan as advanced as it is. You know, and that's the be biggest testament I can say about it is it's not like high tech but still needs the kinks worked out type yeah. of deal this is this is high tech but it's totally there and it's totally something that you can live with and you would greatly enjoy the benefits of this mild hybrid system every day that you owned it Now, as far as the pricing is concerned for this 2020 GLS, you're going to find a roughly pricing in line with what it was last year. So for the very base GLS 450 formatic, that's going to start at $75,200. Now, if you want to make that jump to the 580, which we were talking about in the powertrain section, that really powerful option, uh, that's going to go all the way up to $97,800. But it is worth noting that that does come with more standard equipment than this 450 model. Now as far as how this particular one is equipped, uh, the beginning of the production run is tending to be on the lower end of things, uh, so we do only have a few options. Uh, so we have the optional MBUX augmented navigation for 300, the illuminated running boards for 650, the optional 21 inch triple five spoke wheels for 1750, and the convenience package for 1750. And then finally when we add in, add in the destination charge of 995, this particular model as equipped comes in at 80,645, uh, which is definitely a good value uh, for, this, for this car. I mean, you are getting a ton of luxury, a ton of space, um, and a really awesome powertrain, uh, all for 80,000, which is definitely um, you know, in line with stuff like the X7. Well guys, we've enjoyed watching this in-depth look at the all new 2020 Mercedes GLS 450. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.